This is the 2024 GMC Sierra 2500 HD Denali Ultimate. Is it the ultimate HD pickup? Besides being a mouthful, well, we're going to find out. Hey, everybody, it's Tom from Vehicle Visionary. Today, Carrie and I have borrowed this model from our friends at Mike Morgan Buick GMC here in Shreveport, Louisiana. As always, there's a link in the description of the video to this truck that is currently for sale on the lot. It is not spoken for. Let's dive in and find out what you get. And we start here with the aggressive looking front end. If this truck pulls up behind you at a light and you're in a smaller car and you see this grill and these lights and everything in your rear, your rear mirror, you're gonna probably hear the sound of growling or something. <laughs> it's just unbelievable how aggressive this truck looks. But it has a touch of elegance at the same time. You're gonna find your LED daytime running lights with the turn signal indicators built in LED headlights, and down here on the lower portion of the bumper, we're gonna find the LED fog lights. I don't have those on right now, but they are there. Front camera right here, one of the many cameras on this truck. This also has the front camera washer. That is the front camera washer right there. That runs every time you run the windshield washer fluid. We'll try and remember to show that to you later in the video. On the Denali Ultimate trim, you're gonna have a different look to the front grille as far as the color goes and you won't have the red letters in GMC. That actually seems to fit really well with what we have here. You will find your chrome tow hooks down here on the lower portion of the front end. That way you can pull out all of the Rams and the Fords and the Nissans and whatever is out there that's stuck, whether it's an HD truck or maybe a full-size truck, whatever the case is. And right here, HD. In my opinion, being that this is a black exterior, I think that should maybe have some other color right there just to make it stand out, maybe a red or something that really just kind of causes it to grab people's attention. And if you're wondering with the hood right here, if this is actually active intake for air for the motor, yes it is, that is actually active. It's not cosmetic only. That's gonna help with that 6.6 .6 liter Duramax diesel that's under the hood. And just like you had that HD logo we just showed you on the front end, you'll also find the 2500 logo here on the sides. Now that stands out a little bit better than what we saw with the logo there on the front. How about tire and wheel size? We're looking at 275 on our width right here. We're gonna have a 60 series sidewall wrapped around the 20 inch wheels. I like that look of the wheels. They just seem to fit this truck quite well. Your Denali HD logo right here, I think that works. In chrome, it's visible, it matches the truck. There's people out there that say that chrome is outdated. I don't think that's ever going to be the case. In a lot of higher end vehicles, chrome works. And how about our side view mirrors? Let's go over to the other side of the truck here and talk about those because there is a lot to talk about. You already saw that you have the turn signal indicators built in. In fact, I'm gonna do one thing here to try and help out with everything. We're gonna turn on some of the additional lighting. So you're gonna have the lighting right here. That's going to help you at night or when it's dark. There's also lighting on the inside of the mirror. I know that mirror is a mess, but we couldn't quite get to that when we were cleaning it just because of the space we were in. We had to fold those in. Speaking of folding the mirrors in, that's kind of a nice little segue, isn't it? So the mirrors not only had the power folding function and you can set that to actually work when you are parking the truck and you turn the ignition off. They're also your trailering mirrors, so they're going to extend. That's also done via the power function. That works really well going in and going out. So a very nice feature. And you can see that we have the power assist step right here. Let me open one of these doors back up so you can see that in action as that makes it easy to get in and out of the truck. When I close the door, you'll see there is a little bit of a time delay, whether it's when the step comes out or when it goes back under the truck, as far as that goes to make it easier for someone last second to get in or get out. And here's a little tip for you. If you fold these side view mirrors in and they're flush against the truck like this and you don't want door dings, you can actually deploy those side steps, the power assist steps and have them stay out via a setting within the infotainment screen. So just a little bit of convenience where that's concerned. That way people can't necessarily open their door right into the side of your high dollar truck. 
passive entry on our chrome door handles. That's what this button is going to be right here. And that's another nice segue because I can show you what you need to have in your possession to use that feature, the remote. And you have remote start. And for 2024, there is a little bit of a change to remote start. And that's going to be that all you have to do is hit it twice. The truck will lock itself if it's not already locked. And then the engine will start right up. So no big deal. Now, these steps are not like what we see on the Denali and Denali Ultimates that are the 1500 trucks where you can kick the button on the back and the step comes out to this point right here. But you do have the bed step right here that allows you to gain access to the front of the bed. I'll demonstrate that real fast. You can see I can get way up in here and reach way pretty much into the middle of the bed. That helps me out a lot as far as that goes. And you will have a 36 gallon fuel tank right here. And obviously you have to run the diesel exhaust fluid. We all know why that's there and we know that it doesn't need to be there. Take a little jab, right? Make sure you don't ever go to the gas pumps either because, well, that's why that's green. Just don't forget. Not that anybody would, but I bet somebody in history probably has. And we'll finish things off back here with more LED lighting, the nice bright LED tail lights. That's going to be convenient. You also have a light right here that's going to be helpful in a multitude of situations you might encounter after dark. And again, we will not have the red GMC lettering. It works. That's part of this Denali Ultimate trim level. And real quick, for those of you who haven't necessarily seen these trucks yet, this is the multi-pro tailgate. What exactly is that? Let's run through its functionality. Now, it works as a traditional tailgate, but by no means is that all that it does. You'll see that we have the button down here that allows you to open it to the traditional position, but we also have the button up here. Let's look at what that does. So when I push that, and I do have to give it a little bit of assistance, but that's just the way it works. First of all, well, let's do it this way. You have a table right here. You can use that for, well, anything you need a table for. You can also put it up in this position and it becomes a bed extender. That is very convenient. In fact, that's one of two options for the bed extender feature. Let's open this up a second time. Here's our second bed extender. But that's not all. I promise I'm not about to sell you something in an infomercial. But this is what we have. There is the step. And I know it's a little dirty. We didn't get to all that when we quickly washed the truck earlier. But that's your step right there. You also have the grab handle right here that can help out getting in and out of the truck. On the 1500s, I like to say that that handle is really not necessary because the trucks are a little bit lower. It's pretty easy to hop in and out without grabbing anything. But on these 2500s and the 3500s, sit a little bit higher off the ground. I do think that's useful in that situation. You'll also find a kicker audio system back here that you can use. Kind of makes this the ultimate tailgating truck. You've got your speakers there. You've got your connectivity for whatever you want to play music from right there if you want to. And obviously, you know what all of this is right here. And if you want to tow the most with your GMC 2500, this is what you need under the hood, the 6.6 .6 liter Duramax diesel. It makes 470 horsepower, but how about this? 975 pounds-feet of torque. It's mated to a 10-speed automatic transmission. It has an increase of torque of 25% low-end torque. That is going to benefit those of you who plan to tow with this truck. And by the way, if you're curious to know what this truck sounds like and how it looks in motion, here you go. And how about payload and towing? 4,178 pounds of potential payload. And depending on how your truck is configured, you can tow 18,000 pounds, or if you get the towing package that basically turns the rear of the truck into a 3,500, a single wheel 3,500, you can tow a little over 22,000 pounds. You will find the bed liner here. 
Everything you need to hitch your trailer up, it's ready to receive your gooseneck or fifth wheel hitch, as you can see right there. Nice that that is already there and ready to go. And you have a total of 12 different tie downs, three in the front, three in the rear on both sides. You have also your power outlet. You can see what all is here as Carrie shows you around within the interior of the bed. One thing I did not mention earlier, but you can see it on the screen right now, is the in-bed LED lighting. That's going to be very helpful after dark. That definitely does a good job of shining plenty of light into the bed, maybe more than you might expect. We can't really show that right now because it's not dark enough. You'll also find on this trim level that you have the power sliding rear window Tell GMC down in the comments section, would you like to maybe see a window that, like on the Toyota Tundras, the whole thing goes down and goes up? Would you like to see that as an option here? And let's talk about the interior. We'll start with the door panel. I'll let Kerry show you over there on his side. Let's do the armrest test to begin with. How comfortable is that armrest? We wait for the verdict. It is very comfortable. I have to attest to that. And all of the materials here, Hear that? That's that wood grain looking material. It's really not wood, but, but it's good and sturdy. I like that. And you have the combination of the silver finish and a little bit of chrome right there. I think that works. You can see with the speaker right there that you have the Bose audio system, so a premium audio system here. And as far as the stitching goes, you have some typical contrast stitching and piping, but up there on the armrest, you have more of the baseball style stitching. At least that's what it makes me think of when I look at it. And as we work our way into the interior, there is a lot to talk about here. Now we're gonna have the rear seat pockets here, nothing out of the ordinary where that is concerned. And nothing out of the ordinary as far as GMC is concerned with the rear seat storage. Using the seat backs to their advantage, GMC obviously taking advantage of space that well, I don't think anybody else has. I've never seen this in any other trucks. We will have the fold down armrest with the cup holders built in. That's not unusual either. Also find your rear window defogger or defroster. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And I like the fact that the floor here is fairly flat. You don't have a really high transmission tunnel. So whoever sits in the middle seat here won't be as uncomfortable. You also have the inserts right here that can be taken out with the carpet, carpeted floor mats. And that's a good thing because if you're going to be getting anything, shoes dirty, boots dirty, all that kind of stuff, you definitely don't want to track mud onto these, although those could be cleaned, but why worry about that? Last but not least, as far as storage goes, let's look at what's under the seats right here. You have the storage compartment right here. And you can put a lot of different things in here. Some of you will know what would go in these slots right here. I own a few of those myself. I'm not gonna show that in the video because I wouldn't want to get demonetized. So we'll just leave that to your imagination if you don't know what that is. Can you imagine somebody who doesn't know what I'm talking about who would drive a truck like this? I don't think so. Unless you're the 16 year old that rear-ended somebody that Carrie, who is a police officer, reported on. That actually did happen and it was one of these trucks. Don't let your 16 year old daughter drive your GMC 2500 unless she somehow has more experience than others out there. Use the grab handle to hop on in. Makes it nice and easy. I didn't even use the step for that, but that does simplify things. Now, let's take a look at what we have here. More cup holders, nobody will go thirsty. <laughs> Riding in the back seat of your 2500 and then if anybody has a cold butt on a cold morning, they need to sit on the outboard seats because they can turn the heated seats on. You also have your connectivity options, two different USB options there, and the air conditioning vents. And again, we've got some chrome and silver surround here just to give it that touch of elegance. And for those of you who are saying, all right, Tom, I like what I'm seeing here. What is it going to take to get into that truck and drive it home? $96,600 is the sticker price. Let's see what else you get. We'll take a look at the door panel there. Basically the same setup as what we saw in the rear. You will find a larger speaker, however. Definitely a nice premium audio system in the interior of this truck. When you think of an HD truck, you don't really think of luxurious features and high-end options, but yet here they are. How about the armrest? Just as comfortable as what we saw in the rear. Nice large door bin right there. And with the seats. Here is something that's interesting. There's a lot going on here. Heated and ventilated, their power, 
There are also massage seats. You activate that on the bottom down there, that round dial. There's different selections there on what you can do with the seat as far as the type of massage that you receive. So that's a really nice feature. Obviously, you have everything you expect there. And right here, we're going to have the ultimate logo. I mean, that's just the logo of the word ultimate. Doesn't mean it's the ultimate logo. That kind of sounded almost like I was saying that, didn't it? Even Carrie got a laugh out of that. And we'll have Carrie hop over here into the interior real fast. And I will go ahead and start the truck up just so we can show you some things. Let's start with the upper glove box right there. We're going to have plenty of space in that area. Nice to see some additional space. I'm surprised more automakers don't take advantage of that. And the lower glove box, plenty of space there as well. And you've got a few things in there that will be rattling around on the test drive later on in the video. That's obviously for your hitch receiver, so you can tow with your truck. Now, let's move over here as we wait for the center screen to come up. Hopefully that will hurry up and do something. In the meantime, let's talk about what we have right here. There it is, it's coming, but we'll talk about what we have down here first. There's your button to start and stop the engine. You're gonna have your dual zone climate control, and as I mentioned, you have all of your settings for your heated and ventilated seats. Ventilated here, heated here, you have a lot going on there. Dual zone climate control that you can sync together if you want to sync both sides via that button right there. It works out just fine, no problem. We have some one touch buttons down here. I think you know what everything is as far as that goes. Makes things nice and convenient. I do like the fact that we have the absence on diesel engines of the stop start system. So you don't have to worry about turning that off. That's a big thumbs up, right? Now, if you haven't looked at one of these trucks in a while, you might say the wireless charger should be right there, shouldn't it? Well, actually, that's not where it is. It's changed for 2024 to right here. So I'm going to drop my phone down in there. I don't know if my phone will charge. There it goes. It'll come on. So you just kind of deposit your phone down there. Now, we will have more cup holders right here, as you can see, so you can take advantage of that. You'll obviously have your trailer braking and all that stuff that this truck comes with. And the nice, large center console, plenty of room for arms up here for forearms, unless you have really gigantic forearms. Plenty of room in here as well. If you have gigantic things to store, you can take that little storage bin out and see all the space that's within. More connectivity right here. We're gonna have the USB options and then we'll also have the household power outlet right there. And there are two more cup, or excuse me, well, there are two cup holders right there, but also two USB options. That's really what I was going for before I got brain twisted, not tongue twisted, but brain twisted. Now, let's take a quick look here at the infotainment screen. Hopefully that's showing up with that glare. You can see what's here. Wireless capabilities for your cell phone, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, it's all here. Everything for trailering, it's really nothing new. It just has a different look and feel than it did prior to the 2024 model year. And I do like the fact that we have so many different camera views. And watch this. So there's our front view camera. Over here on the left-hand side of the steering wheel, this button right here is what you use to run your windshield washer fluid. Remember what I told you earlier? That's what happens. So there is your front camera washer in action. We also have the overhead view right there. We can switch to the rear view if we want to, and we can go through and look at all of our different camera views. Pretty easy to figure out what's going on here as far as everything goes. We'll go back here real fast. Here's another view, and then if we push that arrow right there, we can see the bed camera. You can even zoom in if you want to. That can have a lot of advantages. If you think somebody's sleeping back there and you want to identify them, you can do it that way. Or if you need to back up and hitch up to your trailer, your gooseneck or your fifth wheel, you can do the same thing. You can see what else is here. Quite a bit going on there. We're not going to cover everything, but we will go here into vehicle. You have teen driver mode, buckle to drive. If you want to turn that off when you're driving around in a place where you don't need your seatbelt on, I encourage you to use your seatbelt when you're driving. But if you're driving in a parking lot or the pit area at the racetrack, or maybe pulling the boat into the water, launching the boat, or taking it out, well, that could be helpful. How about your collision detection systems? So alert type is going to be there. You can make changes with that. Automatic emergency braking, front pedestrian braking. You do have adaptive cruise control. So adaptive cruise notifier right there, lane change alert, park assist. You can see what all is there. 
I told you there was a lot. There is no shortage at all. And there's so many things you can go in and change with these trucks. One thing I wish these trucks did have that they don't is ambient lighting. And so I'm going to let Carrie get over here in the driver's seat and finish telling you about what's going on here as we go into Carrie's Driving Lounge. Hey, Vehicle Visionary fans and YouTube watchers. Carrie here for Carrie's Driving Lounge. Thanks for joining me for the GMC Denali Ultimate Edition today. If you are not familiar with this vehicle, let's see what's going on here. Door panel. Here are your door and unlock buttons. Your, you have um, two settings for seats. You have a button here for easy ingress and egress. You have your uh, automatic windows for your driver's side, passenger side, not for the back windows, unfortunately. Here are your mirror controls right here, left and right mirror controls. Here's the button for your automatic park brake. Here's your four wheel drive settings, automatic or four wheel high, four wheel low, two wheel high, your trailer mode switch right there. And here's the light switch for all your different light modes. This switch set of switches here is for your uh, exterior lighting for your um, bed lighting and your dimmer switch for your dashboard dimmer. You also have a stock here for wipers, intermittent wipers, and there's also a button here for automatic headlight on the end of that same stock. Turn signals also, left turn signal, right turn signal. They do work. Make sure you use them, folks. This vehicle has heads-up display. Can you see that? Let me see. Yeah, there's heads-up display right there. There's a button right. There's some buttons right here. One button here is for the heads-up display adjustment, high and low, so you can raise it up and down based on the size of the height of the person driving. This one here is for the information that can be displayed on there, and we'll try, I will try to show you that. And then there's a button here to adjust the intensity of heads-up display. Let me try to show you each of those things there. So heads-up display right there is in the very front in that red fenced area, and I can raise that. If you can see, it goes out of view, and now back in. You have information that you can add to the screen. Right now it's just showing speedometer. I'm gonna to add to that the lane departure. I'm gonna to add to that the compass, which shows I'm going northeast. And then there's some dashboard information right there. And back to the speedometer. And then the button here is for the intensity of it, where if I push that button down, it gets dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. And now I'm going to bring it back up to full intensity. That's a pretty cool button right there. Steering wheel. Three-spoke steering wheel. Feels good in the hand. Not very thick, though. I would expect it to be a little thicker for this size of vehicle, but it's not very thick, but it does feel comfortable in the hand. Not overly soft, not overly hard. On the spoke on the left side, you have your dimmer switch. Well, your cruise control activation, deactivation, the um, little roller wheel here for uh, setting your speed on your cruise control, your collision mitigation right here for that button, heated steering wheel also, which you don't need that today. It's kind of warm out here. Here's your Denali emblem in the middle of your airbag. Kind of leathery look, but plastic, but not hard plastic, kind of soft plastic. On the other stock, you have, on the spoke, you have the telephone activation a hang up button and your wheel and your buttons for controlling radio motion uh, radio uh, control channels there's buttons on the back of the steering wheel here which are for volume control I'm going to push the volume button on the back of the steering wheel and the other button for up is for up volume on the back of your steering wheel on your dashboard gauges you have your speedometer which goes up to 140 miles an hour, according to this. On the very, very top up here, it, says, it shows you whether somebody, whether people are wearing their seat belts or not. Your compass shows northeast. This vehicle has nine miles on it. You can see right there's where your odometer is. There's your coolant gauge. Low range, so we're kind of running low on gas here. Um, your gas gauge shows that you have gas, the gas doors on the driver's side. And you can see for the fuel, we're right down there into the E range. That's where your fuel gauge is. 
you have your odometer right here which goes to 6,000 rpm and right now we're in normal driving mode we're in park it shows your park reverse neutral drive and your low range indicator right there and the column on the right side is for putting yourself in park drive reverse neutral or low visor with a light inside it intensifies the longer you leave it open it does extend and covers all of the window that's pretty cool most don't cover all of the window this one covers all of the window pretty cool you have the adjustment over here for your seat belt height based on how tall up the driver is you can adjust your seat belt up and down i always show those because i like that feature in vehicles more vehicles should have that up top here you have your controls for your uh, garage door three different settings on there and you have your roof slide button As you can see that's kind of bright and intense out here today and let me see how we close that button there we go that's for the roof and the second one is for how do we close the, oh, the, oh the actual visor one is manual okay see we learn as we go here and you have your button here that shows whether your parents your airbag is off or on your on star buttons and your uh overhead light controls there the start stop button we were talking about is unusual in that it's not round it's a rectangular kind of shape which i think uh tom says is part of the package for this particular vehicle that's pretty interesting too there's actually an actual knob here to adjust some of your features um, as opposed to always having to go into the controls for everything and i think uh it's a very nice vehicle if you're not familiar with it now you're familiar with some more things on it if you are familiar with it then it's the same old same old for you which is probably why you buy them over and over again and that'll do it in the carriage driving lounge today and hope to see you next time thanks for watching all right here we go on our test drive and i'll tell you one thing about all the horsepower and torque with this truck when you need to get up and go it likely surprises people because you can get up and go i don't really have to demonstrate that here in the video you can take my word for that plus we don't want to get on it too hard with a brand new truck but that's one of the things I like. Even when you're pulling a trailer, if you have it attached properly, you can still get up and go some. We did that with a friend of mine's truck last year. And let's make sure that we're not going to have anybody pull out in front of us. Thankfully, they didn't. Hard to miss this truck on the road, right? But people have done strange things. Kerry being a police officer, he's had people that run stop signs and do crazy things with him literally inches away. So I don't put it past anybody. But overall, this truck is actually very enjoyable to ride in. It's comfortable for what it is. Uh, the driving experience is nice. I mean, it's not going to have the world's best handling characteristics or anything like that. But I don't think that's going to be a big surprise for most people. Plenty of interior room. I tell you what, you will not run out of room in this interior. People who are well over six feet tall, well, that kind of messed up. There we go. Well, let's go in here and turn around. That didn't work the way I meant for it to. But here's, here's one of the nice things about having a truck like this is if you try and make sharp turns like that and there's somebody in the way, well, you just have to take advantage of the space you can find nearby. But hey, you know what? We know what's around us because we have all these different camera views. It's almost as if I intended for it to work out that way. <laughs> That's right. That needs four wheel steering like the Hummer, the GMC Hummer. That would be interesting. But overall, a very enjoyable truck to drive. I'll tell you what, I would definitely call it a luxurious workhorse. That's probably the best way I can describe this truck. Everything here is easy to get to, easy to use, easy to learn for you people who maybe aren't driving a vehicle that has all the technology that's in this truck. The center screen is so easy to hunt and peck your way through and figure it out, as we like to say here on our YouTube channel. I just like the layout here. I really like the changes that GMC made for the 2024 model years to these trucks. I definitely brought it up to a more modern look. I know a lot of you over the last few years told me that the interior looked dated. What do you think now? Okay, tell me what you think about this 2024 GMC Sierra 2500 HD Denali Ultimate. If you can say that five times fast in the video, I'll give you a Vehicle Visionary t-shirt for free.
What do you think? Is it the ultimate HD truck? Tell me down in the comments what your thughts are. Maybe you own one of these. What do you think about it so far? Always curious to get your feedback. I do want to say a special thanks to our friends at Mike Morgan Buick GMC for loaning us this truck for the day. And a special thanks to each and every one of you for being kind enough to give us the opportunity to give you a vision for your next vehicle. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button. That helps us out a lot. If you haven't subscribed just yet, please be sure to do so to our YouTube channel here, Vehicle Visionary. That way you don't miss any future videos. And if you would like to learn about additional vehicles you may wish to consider purchasing, check out the video that's on the screen right now, and I'll see you there.